here we have the graph on heart failure, big increase in heart failure. So what is happening here? Now, I'm going to show you a couple of diagrams from my um, pathophysiology book, and I'm going to put the link to this whole book. You can download it free if you want to. So what we have here is we have a diagram of the circulatory system. Now, you might be somewhat familiar with this. So the oxygenated blood is coming out from the left side of the heart here, the left ventricle, going around the body, uh, becoming progressively deoxygenated as it goes around the body, going back in these large veins here, back to the right side of the heart, going through to the lungs, beautiful, simple circulatory system, deoxygenated blood arriving at the lungs, getting oxygenated and going back to the left side of the heart there. It, it, it always amazes me, although the circulatory system is in some ways so, so complicated. In essence, it is so, so simple, really quite, quite a beautiful, uh, beautiful system. So that's kind of the normal situation. Now, heart failure can be, there's two causes really. It can be disease of the heart valves here. That's uh, one of the main causes of heart failure. Or it can be disease of the heart muscle, the myocardium. And this is the myocardium here. This pumping part of the heart, the myocardial heart muscle. So that's all, uh, that's all the myocardium. As I say, do download these pictures for yourself. So what is that? Now, we, I don't think that the excess in um, heart failure deaths are caused by valvular failure because doctors can diagnose this very easily. Because when you listen, you hear whooshes and murmurs and all sorts of noises. I think this excess of death is caused by disease of the myocardium. Myocardial failure, I think, is the cause of the excess death through cardiovascular disease. So that's what I think is happening. So what all our clever doctors and pathologists need to do is sit around and say, well, what could be damaging? What could possibly be damaging the myocardium, the heart muscle, potentially in tens of thousands of thousands of people across the United Kingdom and potentially in millions of people around the world. What could this possibly be? Now, if the heart muscle isn't pumping out blood properly, heart failure, you would normally define it as the cardiac output. The amount of blood pumped out by the heart is insufficient to meet the metabolic demands of the body. Um, so the body doesn't get enough oxygen and enough nutrients. But as well as that, as the blood's not going through the heart, because the blood's not going through the heart, it dams back. It's a bit like if you've got a traffic jam on a bridge or a road or something, you're going to get a backlog of traffic because you haven't got the throughput of traffic in a narrowed area. So that's what happens in, in heart failure. This is why people with heart failure often become swollen and edematous, uh, depending on the, the form. But I'm just going to show you a couple of diagrams here because they're, they're remarkably interesting. So this is uh, th th this sort of heart failure here. This sort of heart failure here would, would occur when there's a disease of the, uh, the left side of the heart. This is the left side of the heart here. Because um, remember, in anatomy, you're always looking at someone else's. So that's the left side of the heart there. So if the blood's not getting through, if the blood's not getting through these chambers here, um, if the blood's not getting pumped out here, then there's going to be a backlog of blood in the lower chambers, the ventricles. Then there's going to be a backlog of blood there. That increases the pressure. That gives back pressure all the way to the lungs. And you're going to get fluid accumulating in the lungs. This is called pulmonary edema. This is why these patients often find it very difficult to breathe when lying down. That's called orthopnea. And there can also be right-sided heart failure as well. So here we see someone with right-sided heart failure. This right side is not pumping properly. Therefore, the blood is not getting, the blood that's trying to get back in here has got a backlog because that's, that's not being pumped out properly. So you're getting a backlog of blood there, so you get an increase in pressure there, and you're going to get a backlog of blood in the circulation. And that can lead to accumulation of fluids in the liver, the spleen, the intestine, the kidneys. And of course, these patients can get swollen feet because these come from the, uh, these come from the legs, and very often these patients can get puffy, uh, puffy ankles as well because of the, the backlog of blood so i'm afraid that's what we're seeing um a lot more of um if you want some more details on that i'll, I'll um i'll uh, as i say you can download the, the text and read it all for yourself so what we need to work out is what is causing this damage of the myocardium 
that's causing right ventricular failure and left ventricular failure. And then when we know what's causing it, we can take away the cause and hopefully that will reduce the, the, uh, the prevalence of the disease. What we don't know is if some factor has caused damage that's potentially leading to these ongoing deaths. There's unknowns here. But we need a free and open debate to decide what that is. Because at the moment, more people are dying of heart failure and these other diseases, circulatory failure and liver disease. And we need to work out what is doing that. So there's actually a heck of a lot to go on. And it's a bit disappointing that more is not being uh, not being done. It's a bit disappointing that media is not following this up. But that's where we're at at the moment. We are We do know the cause of some of these excess deaths. Let's take that forward as a matter of urgency. Thank you for watching.